Hello, Disc Golf World. This is round two coverage of the Music City Open in Nashville, Tennessee, presented by Dynamic Discs. It's a PDGA National Tour event, the final national tour event of the 2021 season. My name is Kevin Jones, and with me, as always, with GK Productions, is Luke Humphreys. Luke, who we got today? Yeah, we got Justin Bunnell, 05 Bell South Open National Tour winner, Ricky Wysocki, and then we got the Zacks, Zach Johnson and Zach Arlinghouse. Always fun to watch Zach Arlinghouse. Seen him at start at a young age, been really successful. Yeah, he's got a unique way of going about things. He'll throw a lefty backhand and then a righty forehand on the same hole. I think we're going to see some of that today, but hole one, Kev, what do we got? Yeah, hole one is 356 feet. This one's asking for a hyzer, but the thing about this hyzer is it's hard to land it on the right side of the basket, so you kind of have to bail out to the left side if you're going to throw a hyzer. Forehand flex also works really well if you'd like to attack it that way. Yeah, super hole, hard hole to park. Anything left circles edge is probably... First to T, Justin Bunnell. Where you want to be? Justin, a team member of ours on Prodigy. And we are lucky to have him. You know some of his history? Yeah, I mean, he took down that national tour that we were talking about in 05, the Bell South Open, but, I mean, he's won three A-tiers in a year in 2007. Looks like he's still got good form. That looks great. It's awesome to see people like that who played the game before I even found the game at yeah, such a high level we'll come back to it. always a fan favorite rick has some nice shoes on today those look extra grippy that'll help him these boxes are a little slippery out here only when it's wet or muddy i mean or in not the, or in the morning 7 or in the morning at 7 40 <laughs> that's pretty Next ridiculous though a park shot Zachary. you're not really gonna see like Just. i said he really tested the right side the entire way and that's what you gotta do yeah that's hard to do Park job on hole one is great. Zach going Halo Destroyer. Turn that one over a little bit. And that'll just be an easy forehand chip up and down, I guess. Next on the box, Zach Arlinghouse. And Zach burst on the scene at a young age, plays high quality golf, and he's wearing Vans. Needs to hold this angle. Probably going to come out just a little early. He'll have an obstructed putt from there, but could possibly make something of it. Yeah, not a great place to putt from. This looks to be Zach's Gator 3. Hard to tell. Circle's edge, maybe. Needed some ground play. We'll see where that ended up. Grass is really sticky out here. They've had four straight days of rain. That. So everything is lush. Nice little, that was a righty forehand roller, so we're already seeing it from Zach. He's ambidextrous. Look at that. Zach with the standstill. Is he outside the circle there? It looks yeah. like he was. That's different. Yeah, he sat back on that, that back foot a lot. Yeah. Did Might have had some tree in the way. That was a nice bid, though, from Justin. I would assume so. I'm, I'm still a little interested to see how Zach, if he has made a change to his putting style, he is definitely known for jump putting outside of the circle. For sure. And has had a lot of success yeah. from outside the circle as well. He actually played skins this week. You guys will see it on Tuesday afternoon when we release all of our skins matches. But Zach was, I believe, jump putting in the skin. So something he's got in the oh. bag. He just felt like that was a standstill moment. Yeah, maybe he was inside the circle even. But hole two is a par four at 618 feet. This one is a tough hole. It's one of, it's one of the hardest holes on the course, hands down. Perfect drives are going to land right here. From there, we've got to throw through this gap that the drone is flying through, and you're just going to have to miss some of these late trees in order to park the hole, but a lot of people are just looking to get over this log right here. The four feels really nice. 
Four feels great. What is what is the handicap here, Luke? Second hardest hole on the course, Kev. Goal number one is beat this first gap and get moving left. Ricky looks like he's got. Ooh, that was inside from Rick there. He's got a lot of work left. What disc was he opting for there? Makes the hole tough. I was actually looking up stats. What color was it? I th it was like uh, pink, but it looked like a T-bird. Yeah, that T-bird three that he throws kind of champ pink. That's just inside, too. These guys mm. finding that inside mists, very common miss on this hole. So you want to be left. That's what these guys are trying to do. You sneak around that tree right there, get your... Yes, just like that. Thank you. I mean, those were feet different. Zach's now in prime. Well, Even more help. Oh, my Ooh, now, yeah. A little too much help. Yeah. When you start rolling down that hill, you, you cut off your angle at getting to the pin. Wow, with the late drift. That's... Still inside. It's going to be really tricky, but worked his way well up the fairway. All right, here's Rick going forehand roller. This is scary. Mm, pretty great looking shot. That spot, though, that he ended up is not going to be very nice to him. This most likely just a position play. That was a rip right there by Justin. You think he was going early gap, full speed? I have no idea, but he did a great job in sending it in a good direction. Yeah, there's his sneaky gap. I'd barely even call it that on the inside. If you have a really well-thrown drive, you might be able to access it. That's nice from Zach. That's exactly what he wanted to do there. Super manageable from there. All right, Zach, now from the best. This is going to be confusing with all the Zach stuff. I'm going to call him ZJ. That's what we call him anyway sometimes. So ZJ with the best drive in the group, able to work his way to that point. Should be an easy up and down. And Rick's going to try and go this early gap. Yeah, he's just way out of position there. There's no line to the pin from where he is without just getting greasy through the trees. And this tight line is just Ooh. that, really tight. Nice shot from Justin. Gosh. Still out of position. Ricky just not doing very good on this hole. He's going to try to throw in from there for sure. We'll see if he gives it a run. The placement of this hole on this course, it really makes it something that you can't get around right off the bat. You're either going to have like a, a decent day or you're going to take it just like Rick's taking it right now. You got to make a decision though coming in. Until you're in that ditch, like where Zach is, you're never in like an easy spot. It's never e an easy shot. This would be huge. Whoa. Always projecting incredible lines with the putter is Ricky Waisaki. Just off there. And Zach, big, ups big mistake on his upshot. It's going to cost him one stroke. That's a great par from Justin. Good par from Zach as well. Getting in there real hard from Rick. Got to be careful with those ones. This one practically plays as a par five. It's so difficult. No birdies on the day, Kev. Wow. Nobody got it. Four people got it yesterday. But nobody today played super tough. That's crazy. And now hole three, par three at only 266 feet. This one is 
right there in front of you. Not the most challenging hole in the course by any means, but you do have to just throw good line. The tree that becomes problematic are, or the trees are these ones that we're flying through right now. If you hit those ones, those will drop you to, you know, 60 feet. Mm -hmm. That makes it tough. If you get by those, you're almost guaranteed in, in the circle. That looks like a PA4. That could work. Catches late, and that'll be to 60 feet. Yeah, this is a technical shot. Yeah, it is. Got to hit it on a hyzer, and it doesn't really shape very friendly for the forehand. But unless you go through there, that is left of where he was wanting to aim, and he does catch that tree. It's going to drop him to outside circle two. Be tossing up from there. So Zach's got the option to go lefty backhand or righty forehand. He likes the backhand for this one. All these guys getting a little back door with it too. <gasps> Be nice. Okay. Didn't go too far. Yeah, no one's hit the line yet. You need to be turning it a little more left to right. Here it is. Looking good. Oh my goodness, it came so close to that those trees that I was talk, talking about. Yeah. Rick could take a break at this point. Bounce back birdie is exactly what he needed. There you go. Give it to him. There's the jump putt that we were raving about. Let's run this thing back. Looks like he kind of had to go in between a couple trees. Oh. Nails it. Runs it down and points at the camera, too, doesn't he? Dead center. Yes, sir. Yes. Ooh. That's sick. That's our boy Gabe he's pointing at. Just low from Justin. <laughs> Disappointing effort. We always want to at least give it a chance. I'm sure that's what he was thinking there. It's a great party from Zach. Same for Rick. Lots of holes for Rick to get back on it. And this is a four-day event. You mentioned it yesterday, but typically we're playing three-day events, so there's, there's more time. It's totally different. Yeah. That extra day makes such a big difference. When we're playing a three-day event, that first round means so much more than a four-day. Yeah, we're moving over to a new course tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Here we are at hole four, par three at 321 feet. You've got options here. You can go on the left side, but your height control is going to be a big issue. It's tough to have the right height control there. Where the drone is flying is my preferred gap. Something finishing in just a little short of the basket and letting the, the ground play kind of let it filter the hole. The other option is throw something outside and skip it around everything, and that's a very common play. Yeah, there's a little more room for error on that right side. Left side is definitely on the technical side. Zach swing, swinging that as wide as you want to do. Oh, that is nasty. What a horrible, unfortunate roll away. He played it so good for the outsider out. Yeah, totally did. It was probably 18 feet at one point. Finds itself 36 now. And this is interesting right here. Get over. Oh, it looks so good. Man, he's throwing that to miss those trees, and it still finds them. What a perfect angle, though. Yeah, looked like it would have hooked up just right. This is a shot Ricky has got in his sleep. And oh, my. You're seeing those overstable discs come in and just get rejected by the slope of the green. Mm -hmm. Very fast. Lots of roots. Little sticks and small stuff for it to start the roll with. And it's common out here. Here we go, Ooh. down the left side. 
edge of circle too. Yeah. I got to give a shout out to my card mate, Joey Lutz, playing the left side forehand just perfectly. Yeah. You won't catch me trying that. Nice bid from Zach, though. A little right from Justin. He saw the slow-mo cameraman in position. He's trying to run that one, I'm sure. This is interesting right here. This is something Zach will do often is putt with his gator. Yeah. That was a mid-range putt around a tree. He's been doing it for years. That's not something you see every day. No air ball from Rick, but outside of the circle, uphill. Was it a straddle? Uh, No. It was normal. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Some disappointing pars from these guys. Needless to say, this one, not overly difficult. You know the leaders most likely get in that hole. That's going to bring us to hole five. This is a par three, only 236 feet. This one is one of the easiest holes on the course. It's got to be. Yeah. The, the plays to throw a... Uh, a forehand most likely and just sneak inside or through these trees on our left here and that's going to bring you onto the putting green low ceiling all around the putting green could be an issue yeah we got the fifth easiest hole in the course right after the third easiest hole in the course and that's exactly what you're trying to do from the tee yeah it was just a little long with it. I like going full speed. It kind of fits the flight better than throwing like a, an approach disc. Zach maybe watched ZJ go a little long and then made the adjustment and kind of sawed it off. It's not where you want to be, though. And this looks good if it's short enough. Yeah, you're right. That was clear of all the trees. Perfect. There's that good smile from Rick. He could not stop birding holes at any moment. Yeah. And here's the rare backhand that Ooh. looks tasty. Oh, no. Wow. He got rooted. Absolutely robbed. I hate to see it. I literally am not sure what he's about to do right before he does it. Yeah. He's creative, and he's got tons of disc skills. Like, that was a Firebird-looking disc right there, mm -hmm. and he just used that ground play. Yeah. Justin just a bit off today. Oh. Frustrating last two holes for Zach Johnson right there. Rick's made up that double bogey now. After the birdie on one. Back on track. Yeah. And we'll be back after a word from our sponsors. the spark to start your day it fuels your obsessions it inspires your dreams 
Passion challenges your fears, and it repeatedly bathes you in sweat until you are transformed into a new, better you. Disc golf isn't just your passion. It's ours, too. All right, welcome back. These drone covered shots are brought to you guys by Flight Factory Discs. Go check them out, flightfactorydiscs.com. They have thousands in stock, and they just dropped Heather Young's disc. It's a tour fundraiser. If you act now, you might be able to snag one. Kev, what are we looking at for hole six? six. Extreme dog leg to the right here, 280 feet as the crow flies. So probably less. If we don't have a grenade in our bag like you, what are we throwing? You're going to throw a Sky Anheuser or a Sky Heiser Flick or Lefty Spike Heiser. So Zach Arlinghouse is going to have an advantage on this hole. The idea is to get it as high and as tight as possible. Kind of like that. Now it's got to have good tree play. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be off. I mean, tough to say. Yeah, it could be right down that path. I guess so, yeah. That was, that was much closer than I thought. Long right of the hole. Zach's going tomahawk. He calls them whammy hawks. Okay. ZJ, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nicely done. Clap. About 40. <laughs> Young Zach. Like you said, advantage here. Just a hyzer for him. Get it up and turning right. Oh, I don't hate it. All right. That's like with the shot he threw, that's about as far away from the pin as it could have been. Mm. It's kind of just got to get through that first layer. That was extra high. I have no idea on this one. Like inside. All right. Mm, short 80 feet or so. Yeah. Here he is with the putt. It's hard to throw it as high as he did there. Still a little work to be done. And this is a downhill putt. You don't want to run too hard. Yeah, it looked like a hyzer bid. That is cruising, I would imagine. He's going to have at least 20, 25 feet left. All right, so it'll be Zach and then Rick. Cash. Oh, with the standstill. Yeah. So it must have been standstill on one. Yep. So he's hit three outside the circles now. Two standstill in the jumper. Doesn't matter. Dealer's choice. That's a Nexus Aviar that he's putting with. I believe that's the Jessica Weiss edition. They're going in. He's doing it right. He's got Taylor on the bag, his girlfriend. I feel like his game's gotten a little better. Shout out to Taylor since they started dating. Nice. Good for the game. And this does not look good. Yeah, that was just a bit of unluck there to end up in that position. You're playing it to cushion in the trees and drop down, essentially. Shout out to the guys on my card. We played this thing three under today. Austin Hannum hit like a 70-footer. After watching coverage yesterday of everybody going over the top, I decided to not play the forehand roller, go over the top as well. Got to be the play. Has to be. Zach snuck his putt in there. And Justin, not what you want to see on this hole. It's hard to find that much trouble. It really is, yeah. Should be a play in the circle too, worst. Right. Right. The problem is that sloped green, that causes some problems. I think mm -hmm. that that's an issue there. Yeah. For players. This is hole seven, a par four, 632 feet. The goal on this hole is to get out of the gap. That would be superb. But hanging on the left side of this fairway is going to help you get out of here. Maybe have an angle to throw a flick at this basket. Mm -hmm. This is one of the better holes on the course. Really challenging, very fair. You gotta love this hole. Yeah. So here we see a flex forehand. This is like do or die. 
Yeah, this is a stable champ destroyer out of Zach. Oh my gosh. Done. Oh my gosh. Out of the gap into the short grass makes his approach so easy. He's going to have a f another forehand from there that's 10 times as easy. Yeah. He full commits on those. We yeah. keep going. That wraith stamped disc? Yeah, it's a wraith stamped destroyer. Destroyer. That is a. That's a real. That's just a lot of disc for this shot. He could get down there with a pig. Yeah. A rock. He could do it a lot of ways. Either way, he does miss the gap. That's hanging right side fairway. Mm. Looks like it fell on the ground. Basically meaning you're just going to have to pitch out to out of the gap and try to find your par. That looked like an M4. Oh, and finds those branches creating the right side. That's frustrating. Yeah, should be an easy par from there, though. All right, and this Did is the go? play to get out of the the tree area. Okay. That's like 90. Should be good. That is ooh, Let's go, kid. just insane. Justin Bunnell. What is he doing? Incredible play from Justin. All right, ex just displaying extreme knowledge of discs right there is all I can say. Been doing it for a while. These are hard shots to track here, but what they're trying to do is just get out into this open field. Like, that's all they're really wanting to do here. ZJ Gator approach after that huge drive. Super simple for him. He's got that one in his sleep. As you can see, Ricky made it out here and not really anywhere near the basket, but look how wide open it is. Lazy approach, I'd say. Mm. Maybe Frank. trying to give it a... A soft bid instead of just focusing on the layup. Running jump putt. This is a skill that I love to utilize, and man, how close was that? Incredibly close. I wonder if that tree did anything to it as it clipped it. Might have gone in. This would be an unbelievable par. Yeah, that up and down would be world class, <laughs> to say the least. Ricky gets it in there. Ricky's almost always able to just hammer down and focus mm -hmm. when it's on the putting green. Yep. Slipping it in there, Zach Johnson, Ooh, just right. good enough. <laughs> yeah, you got to love those moments <laughs> where you feel like the course gave you one. Right. Thank goodness you were as close as you were. Justin moving back just a bit as we head into hole eight. One of the best holes out here, Kev. Yeah. Another, requires a big shot. Another really challenging hole. Very specific. Got to throw a nice laced shot right up this, this fairway. Finish maybe just a little left. Really don't have to. If you, no. go, if you go straight, you'll be all right. Yeah, you'd be inside the circle. You throw a roller here. Takes a big air shot that, I don't know. Large part of the field probably doesn't have. No, it's it's really asking for that just straight air shot, I would say. This guy's definitely got it. Tons of backhand power. That could work. There we go. That's He's not going to miss that. It is right by the basket. Looked a little inside, but there's a lot of good on that shot. Rick going back to that destroyer, trying to play the same line. Zach does not get the love. That was the exact same line. Straight up. Same mistake. They're going to take different scores if Rick can't drain that 50-footer. That has to have some trees in the way. Yeah, we'll see where he ends up. Going. Yes, lefty backhand here for this. For Zach here, that's tough to get a birdie, I'm, I'm assuming. He has to throw a near 
perfect high level shot to get a birdie on this hole. Totally. That. Yeah, it's a righty finishing hole, no doubt. A little early out of the hand. Just didn't pop it. It looked like from Justin. And neither of these upshots is that easy. Although, Zach making it look easy with the righty forehand. I wonder how one develops that skill. I think it's a baseball thing? Hmm. Yeah, that would make sense. Jump putt approach from Justin. Now Rick for the bird. Yes. Yes. There we go. All it takes is one. Get the world champ going. Watch his straight arm as he's just guiding the disc in the line of the basket. Drops it in there. Yeah, putting with the whales. His putting form just over time has become so perfect. Yeah, nice up and down from Justin after that drive. A little early left. Laughing a bit, relaxing some. Hopefully that turns into some birdies. How many birdies is this hole seeing, Luke? And what's the handicap on this hole here? Kev, hole eight. It's the fifth hardest. Didn't have that many birdies. 15% of the field. That's only 20. So it was a difficult one to get for sure. This one, a little bit easier, but very similar. Coming in as the ninth easiest. Hole nine, really got to hit the gap, mid-range, possibly fairway driver. And playing the hyzer into that hill, definitely something players can look to do. It's a fairway driver from Zach. Just got to get through this last line of defense up here that this hole offers, and Zach does, and that's so crucial. Mm. Yeah, we saw Emerson go early left yesterday. Looks like a good play. That's a rock from Rick. Perfect. You can't throw that any better. That is exactly what the hole wants you to do. Man, that's good to see. Perfection. That's looking amazing, too. Just beat those oh. last two. I mean, come on. Still got to look at it. But yes. What a tricky lefty line to pull off like that. Flipping it late flip, moving it left. That looks like a mid range from Justin missed that one. Oh, yeah. Nice. It, it actually makes me nervous watching these discs fly through the gap because these guys all threw such solid lines, and all you can hope is that they just don't catch those trees. They're not, you know, hard to aim past. And look at that putt from Zach Arlinghouse. Yeah, well outside the circle. No need to jump. Nice. That's a good-looking putt. I like that that stroke. Mm. Look like a Luna out of him. All right. Zach Johnson smoking hot right now. Inside the circle putt. Keeps it up. I mean, that's four that I can think of birdies in a row. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a bunch jacked. He's running around. All over the green. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. After, I'm sorry, after those two holes, though, that... Yeah, four in a row. Yep. A little low from Justin. Yeah, he's going to miss out on that birdie. Yeah, he's getting a lot of pars today, and that's not what you want to see out on this course. It's hard to keep up with pars. Definitely is. Zachariah Johnson. Playing the clean round thus far. You said it. Four in a row. Rick pretty good after that double bogey. The other two looking to heat up on this back nine. Mason Ford still carrying that lead. But we see Dustin Keegan. Paul Macbeth both making moves from down the leaderboard all the way up into second place. Tied second place. And Emerson Keith who was right there falling off a bit. So 
lots of stuff going on. We do have a back nine for you guys as well. Look forward to seeing you there. From the woods of Nashville, Kevin Jones. Yeah, thanks for having us. We will see you on the back nine.